All right, today I'm going to do a rundown of the right way to be a, a boss and the wrong way. I have a lot of experience in this because not only have I worked for a lot of people, I've been a boss myself. And uh, the first thing I want to say, and this is really important, understand that this video is important, okay? Um, I don't care if you're just starting out working from home and you don't have anybody you know, that you hired and you don't plan on it, you don't know what could happen. Your business could take off and you may have to get someone. Last year, I almost had a big deal with my lantern business where uh, a retail store was going to go into business with me and they were considering getting a thousand lanterns. There's no way I could supply that on my own. I would have to hire at least one or two people, which means I would have employees. So you just don't know. So the first thing that I think is really important that you understand, and I want to say this first before anything else. When you hire someone, you need to understand that their life is in your hands and you need to understand the responsibility you have. Now, if this person is a bad employee, doesn't do their job right, doesn't listen to you, sucks at what they do, disrespectful, well, then they deserve to get what they got coming, which is to get fired. But if this person is dedicated, comes in on time every day, does their job properly, respects you, shows you respect. You need to understand that this person deserves to be respected. Losing your job during a bad economy can wreak havoc on your life. In 2012, I was just going along as normal. I never ever saw it coming. I worked at that job for eight years, actually eight and a half years. I was a dedicated employee, I was never late. I very rarely called out sick. If I was going to be late, I called them every time. I never just showed up late. I never slacked off in my job, ever. And I don't just say this. My boss told me that before he fired me. He actually took me aside before he fired me and said that, um, that he was amazed that I could not only work at this job and give it my all, but that I could work from home as well doing the stuff that I do there. He, he said he's never seen it. He doesn't know how I did it. And the fact that I would come into work on time and actually do my job to the best of the ability. And he said, that's why I never said anything. I mean, if it was affecting your job, I probably would have said, hey, you know, I don't know how you can handle both things. You might have to make a choice. Do you want to do that or you want to do this? But he said, I never did that because I never needed to. You always just did it. He goes, I don't know how you did it. I couldn't do it. I don't know anybody who could. So even with that, I still lose my job. So understand that when you hold someone's life in your hands, they may have a family. They may have kids, babies, baby on the way. And it may not be so easy to find a job. Where I happen to live, there aren't a lot of jobs. A lot of the companies in my state left. There's been a lot of stories about that. Manufacturing jobs, factory jobs, all that stuff, gone. And the jobs that are left here, the amount of pay that they're offering, I, I don't know how to survive on that. I make more money working for myself from home than I would working for them. Still, it's not what I was making at the warehouse job. And in order to get what I was making at the warehouse job, I'd have to work another eight years to get to that point. So, understand that. You hold your employee's life in your hand. Respect that. And you better make sure you have a damn, damn good reason to let someone go from their job. A damn good reason. Don't just hastily do it. Understand what you are doing and what could happen. The next thing, if you're going to have rules, follow them through. Don't slack off on them. When I was running my own TV show back in the 90s, we had a rule. And the rule was you needed to show up. And let's put it this way. The rule was if you didn't show up, you had to call us. You couldn't just not show up for, for a day of, of shooting. 
So if suddenly there was no phone call from you, well, that was strike one. Do it again, that's strike two. Do it again, you're fired. Now, if people were late, we didn't fire people over that. We just suspended. So if you're late, strike one. You're late again, strike two. You're late again, you're suspended. And then I believe if you did it again, you were suspended for two episodes. You weren't allowed to come to the studio. Well, it worked out perfectly. It really did. Because we followed our rules through and people respected us. And when, they, when strike three came along, they'd walk into the studio and we'd just look at them and say, sorry, that's strike three. And they would be like, yeah, I know, I know. Well, thank you for letting me be part of the show. And they'd walk out quietly. We never had an argument or a fight and we always remained friends with them. And they were more than welcome to visit and they would. So that was, that was great. It worked because why? Because we followed the rules and because we followed the rules and we didn't slack off on them, everybody respected those rules and everything went well because of it. Now, the wrong way to do it is if you do what the warehouse job did, where they said that they had a rule said uh, an open uh, door policy or an open book policy. I don't remember exactly how they worded it, where you were allowed to speak your mind without fear of losing your job or being suspended. No matter what it was, that they encouraged it. They wanted people to discuss their problems and their issues so that they could solve it. Well, that's what I did. I went into the office to discuss the fact that my friend was sabotaging my job and stealing my work, but I didn't say that. I was friendly about it. I said, I think he needs to know what his job is here because he, he is mixing his job role with mine. He's taking my job. And I wasn't accusing anything. I was just being friendly about it. And the boss agreed and said, okay, I'll talk to him about it. Then he changes it to a personal conversation, asked me about my life and all that. Either way, I got fired a week later for no reason at all. And it was all because of whatever he heard me say in the meeting. Well, how is that an open book policy? How is that me speaking freely and then getting fired for it? I most likely had a great case for a lawsuit. And if I was in a better position and perhaps had money to hire a lawyer at the time, I would have done it. I would have sued them for that. For wrongful termination and for going against their own rule. And I had the rule book and I would have said, here's my proof. So be consistent with your rules. I don't care what they are. Be consistent and everybody will respect it. And follow them through. The next thing, be honest. Don't have, have low, large turds. <coughs> excuse me large brown turds coming out of your mouth after every word you say. Be truthful. If you say this, be honest, don't lie. For example, don't tell your employees that you're going to give them a raise every 12 months or on the anniversary of their hire date or every six months and then never do it. That's Who's going to listen to you? Who's going to believe in anything you say? Because you're a liar. Be truthful. So if I say uh, to my employees, okay, every January 1st is when I'm doing, I do reviews in this business. Every January 1st for everybody. That means on January 1st, you're doing it. Or January 2nd. Don't skip out on that. I worked for two companies that skipped out on it. The first one were, was uh, two and a half years late on my raids. As a matter of fact, I got promoted to, to working in the shipping department and being a group leader, which means that I was like a, a little supervisor to a group of about five people. And yet they never paid me for it. That led me to finally having enough. I mean, I wasn't happy there anyways, but, but after that, not getting paid for the work that I was doing and, all, and for them promoting me to these jobs, I was like, you know what? They're just using me. I'm doing all this work while they save money and I'm not benefiting anything. I've just got more stress on me and, and more nonsense here. So I resigned. No notice, wrote my resignation letter, put it on the desk, I was gone. The warehouse job, you had to beg for your raise. They were generous with the raise. No, they gave good raises there. I'm, I'll never complain about that. But the fact is you had to beg for it because they would never follow their own rules. They would do it on the anniversary of your hire date and they never followed it through. And I don't remember if they had retroactive there. I don't remember. They may have, uh, but I don't know. But even if they did retroactive, 
they would pay in increments. So you wouldn't get it all at once. So now you're just getting a slightly bigger check every week instead of getting that one lump sum. Either way, uh, follow your own rules and don't lie. Don't lie. The next thing, don't micromanage. Micromanaging is is just a bad practice. When you first hire someone, you're going to have to do it. You know, you got to teach them the ropes and, and check them out, make sure they're doing it right. But once they do, let them do their job and back off. That's why you hired them, so that you could do other things and worry about other things. If after a while they don't seem to get it, then they probably don't belong there. And it's better in the first few weeks, the first month, 90 days, whatever it is, you have a trial period. They understand that. You understand that. And if they don't cut it, then they go and everything will be fine. You're not going to be destroying their life over it because they were, you know, it was a trial period. But after eight years of working at a job, you do it. Now you're hurting someone. You can see I'm bitter. Uh, anyways, um, the other part about micromanaging is you're showing your employee that you don't trust them. You don't trust their work. You know, you're like the puppet master and they're the puppet and you're just pulling their strings while they're just like, so you don't want to do that. Uh, The next rule, the next thing that uh, I think is really important uh, for a Boston employee is to not become friends. Your, Your hired help, the boss is your boss. They own the company. When a person comes up, when a person builds their business, that is their baby. That's their baby. That is one of the most important things they have in their life. They put everything into it. They put their heart, their soul, their mind, their spirit, their time, everything. And when they hire people, you are just hired help. That's what you are. And maybe over time you become an asset to the company. You're helping the company grow. But let me tell you something, and this has happened over and over and over and over and over again. When push comes to shove, their business comes first over you every time, every time. So if they're going through, uh, maybe they have to make some cuts. Well, your job is on the, 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 the chopping block now. You know, maybe um, they're paying you too much and they're like, you know what? We can hire someone and pay them half of what we pay him. You know, we're paying him 19 an hour. We could pay this other person $8 an hour. There's no way he'll go for a pay cut like that. So he's gone. We're hiring someone new. That'll happen. You could have been working at this place for 22 years and you could be let go for that reason. And they, maybe they love you. Maybe you're like one of their favorite people and they hate to see you go, but if they'll do it. I've seen it over and over again. My mother worked for a company for 30 years. New company took over. They looked at everybody's record. They saw all of these people like, oh, these people are 30 years. They went and had a meeting with them. They actually paid to, sh- to, to, buy, to get buses to ship all these people to a big retreat and have this big meeting and saying, all of you have been here a long time, over 20 years. You are all safe here. Two days later, they were all laid off. Why? Because they were all the higher paid people. They wanted just the cheap people. So don't, don't become best friends or friends with your boss. Because no matter what you think, they always know in the back of their minds that their business is more important than you. Every time. Even if you are a, even if you're their best friend in life and they hire you at some point, still, you could still lose your job. You're never safe there. And I don't want to have people fearing like, oh my God, I'm never going to be safe in my job. You're never going to be safe in your job. Never. We have to get that out of our heads. We're all replaceable. I I hate when people say that. Oh, they fire me and nobody will be able to do my job. But guess what? They get fired. Someone else comes in and someone does the job. Sometimes they do it better. Sometimes worse. But we're all replaceable. So that's very important that everybody understands that. Very important. For the boss, don't become best friends with your employees. For the employee, don't become friends with your boss. You know, you can have a great, you know, working relationship, but you got to keep in mind that's all it is. Don't go hang out at the bar all the time and go to the movies with each other, go to music concerts as I did. 
And my, my, none of my bosses were ever my best friends. But in the warehouse job, he was like, my boss was like a friend. Took, to, took me to concerts and, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, supported me in my film career and gave me great advice and this and that. But look, look what happened in the end. He betrayed me. I thought the guy had my back and he didn't. He actually put a knife in my back. So keep those things in mind. These are really important. And uh, I think if, if more people did these things and understood all of this, we'd have better working relationships and better, uh, uh, better employees and better employers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again.